Good morning and a very warm welcome indeed to today's Movers and Shakers virtual event. My name is Lena Tasha Salter and I'm Managing Director for Movers and Shakers. So welcome to all of our members from across the UK and of course welcome to our new virtual attendees. For those of you who don't know Movers and Shakers, we're the UK's leading property networking forum. We've got over 25 years of experience in bringing together key players in the private and the public sectors and putting on first class events. Uh, we've been having uh, quite a few virtual events. This is actually our 10th virtual event today. I'm really hoping that you're all enjoying it. We're loving putting on these events. And if you've missed any of our other events, you can catch up on them on our YouTube channel. So please do go and watch. Today is one of our Monday morning motivations, which mean it's inspirations and insights from UK property people. Now, who is more inspirational today than our guest speaker? We welcome Steve Edge, a man who needs no introductions, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. Thinking about what to say about Steve, it's, it's been quite hard. I've known Steve for a number of years, and I think what I, what I really want to say is that Steve is probably someone who is more interested in people than anyone else that I know. He absolutely loves people. He is fascinated by everybody's story. And Steve himself has a great story to tell. So Steve found out he was dyslexic at a very young age. Uh, he couldn't communicate through the reading and writing. So he did quite a lot of art and design from a very young age and to communicate. And when he was 15, he won the National Young Artist of the Year Award. He went on in later years to work on the art sets of Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark. In 1985, he set up Steve Edge Design, which is a really successful business. It specializes in brand identity, uh, brand strategy, digital design and build and st strategy, content creation, uh, and of course now PR. He's worked with a number of global brands over the years, such as Cartier, Fortnum and Mason, Skanska in the construction industry, and of course, movers and shakers. So this morning, uh, Steve is going to speak on maintaining brand, reputation and influence through and beyond COVID-19. So I welcome Steve this morning. We're looking forward to his speech. There is an opportunity for you to ask questions via our Q&A tab on the screen. Uh, hopefully at the end, we've got a chance to take a couple of questions. If not, I know that Steve will answer them afterwards. So we will keep the questions and we'll respond to you all afterwards. So without further ado, I'm gonna leave you with Steve. Please do enjoy and thank you very much, Steve. Hi everybody. It's, uh, it, it's really nice to talk to you, obviously not see you. Um, which is very strange because I love looking at you all. I especially love little David's face looking at me all worried normally, <laughs> worried about what am I going to say or what am I going to do. But here we are in this mad world and mad times. And of course, the whole thing about mad worlds and mad times, it's not just because it's mad means that it should be bad. It's the opposite of actually being bad when it's mad. The greatest ideas and the most greatest achievements come out of when it's mad. And for me, we're gonna talk about today, about working in this world as we are now, in a sense of what impact does it have on your company and on your brand, especially today now when we're all gonna be doing business on the Zoom <laughs> or Blue Jeans or Microsoft Teams. So the impact it has is, 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 is great, but also we know full well that it's gonna bring a very new, interesting formula to the idea of the power of the brand. And when I say mad, you know, for me, as being a creative, we always have to come up with the mad first of all, because if we don't come up with a mad idea, if you come up with a weak idea, by the time it's gone in the boardroom and by the time we spoke about it, it then becomes diluted and then it means nothing. 
If you come up with a mad idea, then you start to debate and discuss the mad idea and good things come from that and things that come that no one else has thought of. So one of the mad ideas I had as a child, which I loved, was when I used to walk down the street and see the blue plaque on the wall, a blue plaque. And I used to say to whoever I was with, what, what, what's that? And they went, oh, the blue plaque is somebody famous lived in that house. And I love that concept of, wow, a blue plaque. Charles Dickens lived here. Can you imagine living in a house that Charles Dickens lived in? Or whoever lived in that house would have been incredible where it comes to the blue plaque. And I knew that, wow, it's... And the, and, and, and the older I got, the more I got interested in the blue plaque and then found out that the blue plaque not only is about the person that lived in the house, but the value that it brings to the house. It brings amazing value. It brings 250 grand more value to the price of the property having a blue plaque. Agatha Christie lived here. David Burns lived here. So I knew that, wow, I mean, I couldn't even afford a blue plaque, but I thought, well, because I can't afford a blue plaque, let alone the gas that bolts onto the blue plaque, I'll, uh, I'll create my own. So I created the red plaque. The red plaque would be the total opposite of the blue plaque. It would be better than the blue plaque because what it would do, whoever you wanted to live in your house, whoever you loved, whoever you was your favorite artist, your favorite poet, whoever they were, you could actually have that on your house. So the whole concept was the red plaque. For me, one of my greatest people that I love most of all was Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali, the surrealist. So I created this whole concept of the red plaque and here we have it, the red plaque. Salvador Dali, 1904 to 1989, the legendary Catalan surreal painter did not live here. It's the did not live here plaque. It's incredible. It's so amazing that Salvador Dali didn't live in my house. And every day I come to my house and I look, Salvador Dali didn't live here. And even better, it reduces the value of your house by 250 grand. Not really. Actually, it makes you smile. It makes people talk about it. And it makes people happy. So here we have something about the mad idea that can bring value to something the opposite of what's going on. So now let's talk about a brief history of working before COVID. Before this, before this terrible thing that's happened, let's talk about what happened when, before this, how we would all go into our office, we'd have our team around us, and all the brand assets that you knew who you were the team, our uniform, the smell, the touch, the whole concept of a business and a brand has gone. But of course, we took it all for granted. We took the whole thing for granted. So let's talk about the friendly receptionist that you walked in every morning to the big atrium and there's the receptionists. There they are, them, them. Did you ever talk to them? Did you ever smile at them? Did you ever appreciate them? Maybe some of you did. Maybe some of you did talk to them and knew them by name. The well-designed office, the office that was so well-designed that you took it for granted. You didn't even look at it. You just became complacent with that office. The amazing thing about touch, touch. 
How's it possible we can't touch anymore? That handshake, the handshake we will put out towards our colleagues and our clients. Not only to appreciate, to say hi and how are you, but to shake a hand to say the deal is done. We took it for granted. The invited meeting rooms, the incredible meeting rooms where we met every day and you have this meeting room and it's all organized and beautiful and laid out, but we took it for granted. The thing that I can't believe most of all is that. Can you imagine? We've got rid of the business card. The business card, the thing so important to do with business, the thing that people took away from you to remember who you were. Now, can you imagine now, getting the business card, oh my God, get the spray out. Ew, ew, get it off. Don't touch that. The food we used to eat, the lunches, the drinks. We took it all for granted. We were all fat cats. Our dedicated workspace. But we took it all for granted. And then, and then, it all changed. It all changed like that. I bet that wasn't part of your business plan, the bottom line, thinking that this may be one day I'll be prepared. Remember now, everybody's going globally. This is the biggest ever global training course that we're on. Everybody's on this training course now. Who would have thought I would have been on a training course? Everybody is. And so now we're coming into what have we lost? What have we truly lost? So, We've certainly lost the front of house. We know that. We've lost the close-knit team. The close-knit team. The team that you come together and again, you knew who you were. The branded environment. The team. The flag. Wear the flag. We know who we are. We're going to go out and win. We're going to beat all our competitors. Because look who we are. This is who we are. Body language, body language, whoa. We know that you're in a built, you know, you're around the table and you're having your meeting and you're trying to do a deal. You can, still, you can soon see who's dodgy and who's not quite right and the mum that's screaming. Body language is so key. We've lost body language. We've lost eye contact. Eye contact where we looked at each other and the one with the eye going that way and that way you knew full well, oh, dodgy, be a bit careful of him. Business hierarchies. And of course we know about structures and flows of meetings. It's what we've lost. Now, is it loss? Is it truly lost? Because people talk about the old school, the old school way of working. That's old school. So when we look at old school working, things called the good old days, do we actually now think that we've lost the good old days and the old school? I remember not that long ago getting into a taxi. <laughs> I don't get into taxis anymore. Getting into a taxi. And that taxi driver, he kept looking round at me. We're driving, he's driving and he keeps looking round at me. And he went, I know you, don't I? I know you, I know you. Where, I've seen you somewhere. I went, yeah, 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 maybe, maybe. He goes, you're that artist, he says. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm an artist, I say. Yeah, yeah, I thought you were. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I've definitely seen you. He said, you know, he said, I'm the oldest cabbie in London. He said, I'm 76 years old. I said, all right, mate, in that case, can you keep your eye on the road, please? You keep looking around at me, can you keep looking? He went, yeah, 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 yeah. Gary's on driving. He said, I went, wow, 76, that's amazing. Well done. I said, you've obviously seen changes. Oh, yeah, he said, I've seen changes. He said, but I love change. He said, because people talk about the good old days. 
He said, and what a load of bollocks that was. He said, I'll tell you about the good old days. He said, they talk about the good old days when they said, of course, we could leave our front door open. We could leave our front door open. He said, of course, we could leave our front door open. We had fuck all to Nick. That's the good old days. He said, we had a table and chairs and that was it. That's all we had. So of course we could. So that puts always the good old days into perspective. Always. So what have we gained? What have we actually gained? So we've certainly, certainly gained time. I was just talking with Lee and Julie at the moment and we were talking about how we've gained time. I can't believe it that no one's ever late for a meeting, ever. They're never late for a meeting. Can you believe that? People that come from Chicago and Paris used to come to us. They'd arrive at the airport slightly late, the plane, ding, they get on the tube, the tube, they can't find their way across London and they rock up an hour late. And then they're all perplexed and they tell us their story and the meeting's supposed to start an hour ago and then biscuits, tea, there's the loop. Three hours before we even start doing the meeting again, the whole team are now in involved in it. It's like, whoa, now, look what happens. 11 o'clock, bang on, yeah, we're all on. Job done, 15 minutes, business as usual. Then we look about efficiency. We're so much more efficient because of this. You know, it's very interesting now because it's not just about rocking up to work. People used to think it was their right, oh, I'm, I've rocked up to work, that's enough. Is it enough? It's not enough. It's not enough. The light shines into dark corners. Mm. And we're seeing this. Gosh, people that no longer can do their job as we thought they could. That's how efficient we've become. Flexibility. We're so much more flexible. Two offices now become one. Eight offices become one. A hundred offices become one. The new look of our team and who we are. The ability to be international, so easy now. We can be anywhere we want in the world as one, which is quite amazing. And this thing about wellness. Look how well we all are, considering now the most terrible virus out there, but the Luckily, the people that haven't got it, and we're working as we are, that actually wellness now is becoming, we have more time, we're freer, we don't have that journey, and that it's true wellness. Not a wellness that people have been trying to pretend and make and trying to find the answer to wellness, biophilia, and yoga, and a fucking yoga mat in the room. None of that. A more leveled workforce. As I say, not having to commute. And because of that, the wellness, not having to commute. What do we have? Natural saving the planet. A thing that's very dear to my heart. And obviously to David's, the fact that we, we're out in nature a lot. And it's happening now. Here I am in Shoreditch. I'm in Shoreditch, I can breathe again. I can hear the prayer coming from the mosques. It's incredible. It's so exotic. I think I'm in other countries, and it's so amazing. And it's coming because it's happening in a way that it's naturally happening. More open mindset. And of course, I've just spoken on about what have we gained from what we lost. And this list is far longer to what we've lost. The so-called good old days. So working from home, it doesn't compromise. It's not about compromise. It's the opposite of compromise. It's about us finding the new way. 
because now we're all on the level playing field. Now we have the greatest opportunity from the smallest company competing with the biggest company because it's always about people. The team that's working on that project, not the 50,000 people within that company and you've only got five people in your company. It's about look who we are, that now it's level. This is business and this is how we're gonna do business. So it's all about adapting. We have to adapt. And as I said earlier on, adapting and the big idea and the mad idea, out of adversity, look what will happen. One of the greatest things recently about adapting, the perfect example was one of my sons said, Dad, because we like our sport and we can now watch Bundesliga, he said, I've just bought, uh, I've sent your portrait and my portrait. It costs 20 euros each and we're now in the stand of Borussia Mönchengladbach, which is a football team. There's 15,000 cardboard cutouts in that stadium. And I'm one of them and my son. And we watched the game. <laughs> and I watched the game to see if I can see me on there. Now, of course, it seems a small idea and so what, but it isn't. It's a big idea. I'm telling you the story. You'll probably tell someone else the story. You might even send your portrait and get into the stand. And that's what we need to do. It's about finding the new. And remember, never, ever stop having fun because we mustn't stop having fun. You've probably heard me talk before about fun brings a difference to the business. It's all about enjoying finding difference and not for the sake of difference. And of course, the brand after Corona, well, things will change forever. We now have the greatest opportunity in our hand to hold it. We do, we truly do. And of course, what are we going to be doing? Are we going to now say we're going to embrace it so we can? We look at the Zoom room. What does the Zoom room mean? Today I've sat in a bit of my home where all my, my library. I've looked at every one of them. I haven't read any of them because I can't, but they're all picture books. They're books on natural history. They're books on fishing. They're books on design architecture, all visual books. But it brings me great happiness to have my library where I can take out books, smell the cover and feel the texture of the paper. So now we come to doing business in the Zoom room. You have to be professional in a Zoom room. What, you're gonna be in a dodgy bedroom with your knicker drawer out and a pair of Diana doors hanging out the side of them and you're doing a 50 million pound project or a pair of dodgy socks. You need to create now the new brand. What is that? What is it gonna be? Is it gonna be the British Airways uniform that we're now gonna be wearing? That it's about, you know, color theory we know is so important. If your brand is yellow and black, then what? Is it we all wear yellow and black? A lovely Hermes scarf for everybody. Obviously the ladies, but I'd have one or the gilet with the badge on the front. But we now need to be professional. We now need to make sure that we are gonna do business in this new light, in this new world, the more efficient way, the more professional way. Of course, one day we'll go back to this thing, they call it agile working, which we're now being instructed to find the new name for this, which we're working on. Because I don't like agile working. I don't like that. But it's about the new way of doing business. Of course, we need to come together every so often. We need to hug. We need to kiss. We need to be one. But we also need to now to be more efficient. And we can be more efficient. We can work from home. We know we can because we're doing it. And the brand is even more now important that you have now the digital world has now come to the front. We are truly now living in the digital world. It's not just about now 
having the Zoom room, getting the Zoom room right. But it's about your website, right? You know, we started many months ago creating a team of people which I have around me building the fastest websites in the world because we know it's all about that. It's all about that. It's the first thing that people go to now is that they're on that all the time. So you need to come up number one, you need to be quick, you need to spoon feed the information quicker than ever, and content is key, and social media, we know your story is now gonna be more important because you're on a level playing field, and I said that already. You can go out and now win business against the biggest multinational companies in the world because this is how we're all gonna do business now. So if your story is bang on, your look, your image, everything is so professional that people don't take, that they get it and they want to do business with you. We know this is the way forward of now winning business. The digital world has come and the brand is going to be king. And of course, we mustn't think about this too much of, we know we'll all get through this. We know we will come out the other side. We know one day with that amazing team of movers and shakers, when we're back in that room together, I will hug all of you one by one and kiss and shake hands. I'm going to do all of it with you because we know we'll be back one day. And thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Well, that was a fantastic way to start the week. I knew it would be. Thank you so much, Steve. It's really inspired me. And I think you, you are absolutely right. There's got to be these positive things that we take away from all of this. And there clearly is. And I love the, the level playing field. I think, you know, that, that really motivates people, makes people feel right. I can go out there and do something. I was going to ask you a quick question. For somebody that's probably starting out, uh, you know, a new startup, maybe they've got pretty low budget at the moment, but they've decided they want to use this time to start a new business. What do you suggest that you do perhaps on a, on a lower budget? What were the sort of top three things that someone should think about? The top three things is definitely about communicating their story about what they do and how they do it. Because you need to tell people that this is what we do. So many times you can see companies that you go to their website or even their simple little holding page. And you kind of think, well, I don't know what they do. Mm. That corny expression, if it ain't on the tin, you're right, then I don't know. Make sure if it is what it is on the tin, that's what you've got to remember. doesn't matter how young, how small a startup. If you can give that, yeah, I'm a painter and decorator, or whatever you are, people go, oh, I know what they do. Because so many times, companies... They have all different sectors. They're involved in building hospitals or residential or doing commercial. People think, well, what, what actually do they do? We now need to say, this is it. In a nutshell, this is what I do. Keep it simple. Keep your brand very simple. You know, don't be fussy. Don't overdo it. Don't gild the lily. Remember the most simplest things are the most memorable as a mark and a brand. Get a color that's going to be, again, memorable and that you like it yourself and it makes you happy and smile and that people won't see that color, they'll know who you are. And above all else, believe in who you are. Believe in now because this is truly a time for you to compete with the big boys and the big boys also to compete because we are now, again, on this new way of doing business and that it truly is that, sorry, that expression, we are, all, we are all even now. Everybody's even. It's like the premiership. We're all in the premiership and everybody now can do business together. Oh, that's brilliant. Now, that was a question that came in from one of our members. So that's, that's really great. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and just to remind our audience that this is recorded. It will go on YouTube so you can pick it up again 
re-listen to it, re-watch it, and obviously please do recommend it to other people. Thanks so much to Steve this morning. Uh, and also to remind you all that our next event is this Thursday, June the 4th, and it'll be a Views from the Top interview with Bill Hughes, who is Head of Real Assets at Legal and General Investment Management. So really looking forward to that one. Do register on our website. And again, do look up our YouTube channel. But thanks to Steve. Thanks to you all for, for logging in and watching today. Keep safe from our family to yours. Thank you.